You don't need to pay for an app to monitor what your computer is doing because macOS includes a utility called Activity Monitor. And this Activity Monitor app will show you what's going on. So to get to it, just click anywhere on the desktop so you're in the Finder and go up to the menu bar and click on the Go menu. Then go down to Utilities. This will get you into your Utilities folder. And one of the first utilities is going to be Activity Monitor. Just double click on Activity Monitor to open it up. And here is Activity Monitor. And this app is broken up into a few tabs at the top. So you can see CPU usage, your memory usage, uh, how much energy you're using, which I'm on a desktop, but if you're on a portable machine with a battery in it, this can be very helpful so you can see how much battery is being used by a specific app. Uh, you can see your disk usage, how much space is being taken up by specific uh, apps, and our network uh, kind of ins and outs in the network movement that's happening between this computer and specific apps. So if you find uh, internet issues, uh, you can use that. Hard drive issues with the disk space, battery and power, and then we have our memory and CPU usage. So before we dive in and look at a couple little things in the app, I want to bring up a support article from Apple that's actually a pretty useful article. You can just do a search for the article number here, which is HT201464, at least as of the recording of this video. And it brings up this article, which is called How to Use Activity Monitor on Your Mac. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, but what this article shows you is an overview at the top so you can get an idea of what's happening. But then it goes into each of those tabs and explains how you can use those tabs and really understand what's happening. So if you want to know and how to better use Activity Monitor, please go through and look through this article, read uh, all the information that's on here. It's pretty straightforward. But some of the, the highlights I want to point out are going to be specific to CPU and memory usage. So notice on this graph, we have CPU load. And this is this little graph in the middle that'll show you how much work your processor or CPU is doing. And if you see that the graph is completely filled up, and maybe it's going 100% the whole time, you can look for an app that's using the CPU. And a lot of times it's not going to be like iTunes or Final Cut Pro. It may be a process, something like this one, com.apple.appkit. So you might see something like that taking up an enormous amount of CPU. And that's where you're going to have to investigate and dig down and see which app is actually using that process, which it may be Final Cut. It may be a plugin that you've added or some kind of an effect or rendering that it's trying to do. You never know. So it's something that you're using Activity Monitor just to investigate. Now you can select an app. Let me switch back over to Activity Monitor. You can select an app or a process here and quit it. So if you notice something is not responding, it might go red. And if there's something else in here using a lot of the CPU and you're like, I just don't need whatever that thing may be, you can select it. And then you have an X at the top here that you can use to quit or force quit a process or an app in this case, which would be quitting out Activity Monitor. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to hit Cancel. So that's one thing to point out is the CPU usage. And then same thing in the memory side. This is probably the most common that I see is get that little spinning beach ball icon showing up on your machine. A lot of times it's because the memory is filled up or the RAM that's installed on the computer. So when you go in here and you look at memory, if you see memory pressure is green, you should be fine. But if it's yellow and red like it's showing in this example graph here, your physical memory is going to be how much you have installed. In this case, this machine has 8 gigabytes, and 7 of it's being used. So that's uh, kind of something that's concerning. You're filling up your physical memory, especially with Final Cut and these advanced apps. You're going to use a lot more memory, and that's why when we talk about buying a new machine or getting a computer, I always recommend getting as much RAM as you can have installed. So that's what allows you to multitask. For this example, they opened up, I think, just every single app on here. They put a whole bunch of memory in there to get it to fill up. So this is something you can just kind of take a look at very quickly, open Activity Monitor, see what's happening. If we go back to my Activity Monitor CPU load, Notice system and users, 6 and 4%, almost 90% is idle. So 
the CPU is fine. If I was having some kind of an issue, I wouldn't look to the CPU. If I go over to memory here, notice my memory pressure is green. I'm not seeing like they are back here. I'm not seeing the yellow or the red. Uh, I can see Final Cut Pro is running and it's using the most amount of memory uh, for that specific app, but I'm not having any issues. I'm not seeing a beach ball, so I'm okay. Now, if you look down here, like we were showing on the other graph, physical memory, I have 16 gigs on this machine and I'm seeing that almost seven is being used. So if I was like this other machine back here and only had eight gigabytes, I would almost be filled up with my memory with having these couple apps open. So that's why one reason I really recommend having that extra memory can help out for you and uh, let you avoid having to use cached files and having to swap uh, memory out onto the, the hard drive like they're doing in the background here. Get all of those numbers. If you want to learn more about them, read through this entire uh, article. They have some pretty cool uh, explanations and actually really simple to understand. Um, this computer, yeah, I don't think this one is a, a portable machine, uh, but you will see all the, the battery usage information in here as well. Um, yeah, and they have, here, here is the battery information. So they do have that on here, and you'll see how that impacts happening and the, uh, the battery effect on there. So um, this computer, was they probably just turned it on to do this these screenshots here, and they just opened all these apps up, so that's why the battery for the last 12 hours is not, there's no graph there. But if you actually are using your computer like a normal person, you'll have more relevant information there that you can look through and diagnose some, some problems you might be having. And then we see our disk usage here. Uh, and this isn't so much looking at the amount of space you've taken up. Now, if you watched a video from a couple days ago, I talked about storage and how you can look at the actual files that are taking up the storage. This is more looking at uh, how an app is interacting with the storage on your computer. So if you're watching a movie, for example, in order to watch that movie, maybe it's a QuickTime file or an iTunes movie, that's going to be stored on the computer on the hard drive, and it has to read that information. So you'll see reads in re and writes out. So watching a movie, it's just reading the information. However, if we're importing a video into Final Cut, it's going to be writing that file onto the computer's hard drive. So that would be writing the information versus when you're watching something, you're just reading that content. Um, now, there's a lot of gray area in there that will go back and forth, but this will give you an idea of what's happening and, and what you see on there. So if you have a, a standard spinning hard disk in your computer, something like reads and writes can be slower, and that's where having flash storage your read and writes tend to be a lot faster. You can get a lot more read-ins and writes out per second. And this is a way to look at that and see that. Uh, then we talked about network, very similar to the hard drive. It's just instead of the drive, it's looking at a network over uh, yeah, over your network, either wirelessly or through uh, Ethernet or another form if you have that on there. Uh, and then some of them, I don't think I had it in mind, but some of them will have a cache tab on here, depending on the, the version that you have. So you can see how many files are being cached uh, to the computer. So that's kind of an overview of Activity Monitor and what it does. A couple other little tips I want to throw out there. Uh, if you don't know when the Activity Monitor is open, you can actually go up to the menu bar under the View menu, and you can choose what columns you show. So we see some of the basic information, and this is, for most people, the most important information they want to see uh, in any of these tabs. But you can definitely select another column here if you want to see that information. Um, we then have the dock icon, and this is something where there's apps out there like uh, iStat and some other ones that'll give you menus and, and other pretty, pretty cool graphs, and they're useful uh, apps, but a lot of times they're paid apps. So if you want just some free monitoring options here, that's what you can do here. So you can uh, choose what you want to see. So right now, the application icon is what I'm seeing on the, the dock at the bottom. So if I go down here, it's just the uh, activity monitor app icon. Fine, you know, that's what most apps will show. But activity monitor gives you the option to change that. So we can actually see the CPU usage or history from this other stuff. So if I want CPU usage, I'll click that. And then it gives me this little chart at the bottom with the CPU usage. And right now, we're barely using anything. So you can see a couple little tiny um, uh, lines there filling up. But if the CPU is going crazy, you'll see this going up and down as it's processing information. So uh, definitely play with that. And you can uh, see that. 
Additionally, if you're trying to troubleshoot, it might help to update more frequently. Uh, otherwise, I'd keep it at five seconds. And uh, yeah, you can then narrow down the processes that you see or use the search field to find a specific process that's happening um, and then be able to actually inspect or go into details on that process. So we have Final Cut um, uh, selected right now. So if we inspect that process, we can actually see a little bit more detailed information about the Final Cut Pro process and some statistics, uh, open files and ports, and all this information can be daunting if you're not uh, a developer or someone that's used to this information, but as you get more used to the app, this information can be very helpful. And um, I didn't need to do anything through that one. There's one other um, tip I wanted to show here. Yeah, and it's under here in the window menu. So we're seeing the activity uh, monitor window but you can also bring up these other windows, which is kind of nice. So if we do the CPU usage, for example, this is what we were seeing on the dock uh, icon down here that we switched over. And you can do this as well for um, the history of the CPU. And we'll let that run for a second. You'll see the data in there. Same thing with the GPU history. Uh, this shows us our GPU that we're using. Uh, so you can bring up these other windows, which is kind of nice to be able to just track additional usage and what's happening on your computer. So uh, that's going to run there. Let me go into Final Cut here for a second. Notice these windows are floating windows, so you don't have to switch back to the app. You can actually keep them on top and monitor this as you're using um, Final Cut and going through. So it uh, looks good. Let's do a render all. Oop, if I spell it right, render all. So now it's going through and rendering, and you can see as we go through and render, the CPU uh, monitors, you know, it almost maxes out on all four of these, and we can see these green lines go way up because now the CPU is being used. But also, if you if you have a video card uh, in your machine, if you're considering one versus another, notice how much of the video card is being used. It's almost, or really, it's at 100%. It's filled up the entire thing while it's going through to render here. Um, and all this is being done using Activity Monitor. If I switch back over to the Activity Monitor app, uh, if we go to the CPU tab, notice we can see the CPU being used almost all by the user, meaning my user account is signed in and, and using this app. The system itself is not doing it. I triggered that effect or that render to happen, so that's why it's uh, processing there. Let that run for a second. Pretty straightforward. Now the render is done, so now we can see the CPU load just drops way down. Now it's done rendering, uh, we're good. Um, so same thing if we go over to the memory side of it, rendering, there's not really anything being cached into the memory necessarily. Um, so there's not much load here, we don't see any memory pressure change in there. So if you want to get an idea of how certain tasks in Final Cut impact what your system is actually doing and, and the hardware that it's using. Uh, Activity Monitor can be a great app to view that information. And this is all free. It's built into Mac OS, so you don't need to go out and get uh, another app or anything to get some of this information. There are definitely, like I mentioned earlier, apps that give you more detailed graphs and kind of break it out in different ways, but I still find Activity Monitor is a pretty powerful app. So. That's our tip for today. If you want to see something specific, like always, please leave a comment below. Make sure to subscribe. If you haven't, just hit that subscribe button, and you can uh, be sure to get a little notification there when the next video gets posted tomorrow. All right, everyone. Have a good one.